Bernard showed as Bernard noticed the blades, bones, and the binder. Is all, <laughs> he was also an assistant director for on upcoming movies like The Possession. Well, Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters just passed, actually. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit. Um, Iron Man 3 as well. And Mario lives with his beautiful wife, Jennifer, and his baby bo boy, Logan, who will also, um, let you know, is actually our godson. Um, <laughs> we're very, very proud of that. Um, so, uh, Mario, you're also working currently on a film with Rob Schneider, with a title that we're not going to say, because I don't know if there's a title for it yet. Yep, we're going to keep it personal. So, um, Mario, welcome, welcome, welcome. We also have Dr. Ben Castillo. Frank is, uh, he works as a senior editor and multicultural specialist at RTL Bensinger. He is an adjunct, pro adjunct professor of religious studies at Broward College. He is a member of the Academy of Catholic Hispanic Theologians of the United States and a member of the Catholic Hispanic Institute of Liturgy. His professional interests include Catholic social thought, liturgical theology, liturgical and theological aesthetics, liberation theology, U.S. Hispanic Latino theology, religious studies, comparative religion, religion and film, and cultural identity. Welcome, welcome, Frank. And last but not least, where did she go? There she is. Okay, Nicole Abitino. Nicole started her career as an investment management work at, in invest, investment management, working in private equity and hedge funds for six years, while simultaneously working as an actress in movies and television. It all um, turned into a blend in order to get her to film funding as a DP for agencies and producers with packed, uh, packaged projects, bringing multi-million dollar deals to the table for films with actors including Terrence Howard and Angelina Jolie. Um, she now has Gabriel Messenger's Films, which is her own production company, and has branched into US theatrical distribution with a successful 2013 initial launch landing their platform release, The Investigator, which was one of our films actually last year, uh, in the top 10 box office averages on opening weekend. Nicole most recently worked in faith-based marketing for major studio releases, most currently Mark Burnett and Roma Downey's Son of God, and Ma Max Lucia Luca Lucado's, sorry, A Christmas Candle. She is currently producing a new indie film entitled The Favorite, and just optioned an action feature based on true events surrounding the Shroud of Turin, which we're very, very excited about. So, welcome our panelists, please. We're happy to have you here. So for those of you that are brand new and don't really know how this works, the, panel, the panelists will have about two minutes to give us their very first um, raw impression of the film. And um, afterwards, I'll let them kind of rebuttal or piggyback on other, uh, each other's thoughts. Then we'll open it up for you in order to um, get a Q and A going, just to talk about the themes that are in the film. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the mic over here. Let me have a mic. Oh, you have a mic too. Wonderful. Okay, so Frank, are you taking the lead? Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, can you hear me? I'll turn it up here. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be in the future place. Ah. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, well, to me, life is uh, a metaphor for um, salvation, for everything that, yeah, thank you for this. To me, uh, life is a metaphor in, in, in a religious sense. It's a metaphor for what we want to gain. And what do we want to gain? We, gotta gain, we want to gain salvation. What does salvation mean? Salvation means that we acquire that eternal life that we are seeking, that, that we spend our whole lives, or we should spend all our lives seeking. And to me, this movie was about life, a, a metaphor for life in both senses, in, in the sense of the concrete real life, the biological life, if you will, that we live, and in a sense, everlasting life. Everlasting life that it is, uh, they're agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, in the sense that we could not understand our life without that other life that we're called to live. And so powerfully did this movie speak about that to me. And especially because Pastor Lee symbolized, represented God, God himself. Uh, the, the, the image that came to my mind is the parable of the prodigal son. Because a, a father who is so concerned, so 
uh, worried about looking after uh, his children, not only the, the, the child that was lost or the, that went away and that comes back, but he was always on the looking out, always trying to find that child, trying to make amends with the child that left. And I think Pastor Lee finds in the ugliness, in, in the brutality, if you will, uh, of how these children are abandoned, he tries, he tries to find hope. Hope for what? Hope for a better life. A better life for them, a better life for the entire world. This is not just a situation, he says, that is happening in South Korea. This is a situation that is happening in, in every single society of the world because we do not value life. We do not value life the way that we should value life as life itself, not for any practical, utilitarian, or other uh, purpose for life, but value life for life itself is the only thing we have. So I was very impressed, I was very moved by, by this film. And uh, personally, the, the very last words that he says is something that touched me so deeply. My son is adopted. Um, and when I finished my, my doctoral uh, dissertation is, is dedicated to him. And, I, and it says, uh, this is dedicated to Andres who has taught me what it means to be an adopt, adoptive son of God, because God has adopted us. So I, I am an adoptive parent because I am an adoptive son. Hi folks. Um, yeah. Are we translating? All right. Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the first things that really struck first was, yes, I, I did not have a dry eye through the whole movie. Uh, and not, not because of sadness in a way, just because as you said, the movie brought such hope. And something that really blew me away when you're watching the footage of um, Pastor Lee, however his age is and however many children he happens to have at the house at the time, there seems to be no sign of exhaustion in his face. In his face. And in his faith, like he's just such an upbeat human being. Taking care of one child alone can be exhausting. In, in a house full, I can't imagine. And, he just has such a rock steady expression on his face the whole time. Um, that blew me away. Um, another thing about this movie, and, and as a filmmaker, and, and I think the, the, the landscape of filming, filmmaking has changed, um, and this movie proves it, is this is the first time I've seen this full feature, but this man's story has gone very viral, and there's so much, uh, so many clips, and, and his story is so wildly available online that um, that outpouring of support has come from the fact that um, this man's story has become so widespread around the world because of, of the viral concept of filmmaking now. And that, that is part of it, the drop boxes. And, and as you saw the montage of footage, the drop boxes have been installed all over the world um, because he came up with this concept of this very simple concept that cost nothing to make and yet save so many lives because of that video that's spreading out on the internet. look at how much they've 
grown, like how much they've learned and all the things they're doing. One is going to be a nurse, one is studying this. I mean, it's there's no limit to the extent, and that's what's so powerful about film, um, and why you know it's one of the things that I've dedicated, you know, my life to is switching over making movies for God as opposed to just making movies. Um, it's so difficult because you know th this theater should be full at all times. You know every theater, and it, it's harder to get the people in here when it's something positive as opposed to something negative. I mean, if it's a horror film, everybody's lined up around the building to see that negativity, to be you know to be afraid. And um, this man's journey is just—it's absolute uh, testimony um, to the Lord and to God, and to actually dedicating ourselves and our lives to our true purpose. And I think that's why he doesn't ever get tired or feel tired because he's running on the Lord's power. He knows what he's doing. He knows what God has given him. And once you, you're you in line with that, there's no stopping any of us. Interesting. Any piggybacking or um, from? No? Yeah, if I, if I may. Um, actually, I, okay, okay, I'm going to keep the piggyback. Go ahead. <laughs> Going back to the idea of, of purpose and all that, I think um, I think that's, that's something that's so beautiful for me. It was a very hard film for me to watch the first time I watched it. Um, I had to pause it. I had to step back. Um, we it, it's it just so happened that um, I, for for us our experience um, with this specific festival is that all the films that we um, that we watched uh, once they were all submitted, we watched now as as expectant parents. So it's it's such a different lens, um, you know. All of little lives, uh, lives uh, stepping stones. You know, you, you end up watching everything so differently. Um, I can't even watch a Disney movie the same anymore. Um, so it's you know, um, when we were first watching it, I had to stop because it is it is a rough, rough, especially that first shot when they're I think they're um, feeding their their son through the tube, you know, and the noise and everything. I just I for me it was my heart was hurting so much. Um, but at, at the same time, I had to, you know, I geared myself up again. I'm like, this is life. Life is, and, and I think it's so beautifully put in this film because life is is messy and it's unpredictable and um, it's full of joy and it has a lot of those moments where you think, I can't, I can't watch what's going to happen next. Um, and at the same time, once you do, you realize, oh, I, I didn't really see that. I'm over that. Caught it. I, I went over that bump, and and look at where we're at now. You know, and what a gift. Um, so I just I felt this entire movie just a lot of that. It's like oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then you pass, you know, that that struggle and and um, and that fear, and it's such a beautiful thing. And it um, it takes me back to the um, the the young son, the the one who who may inherit uh, his father's kingdom, if you will, um, and the fact that you know with his disability. Obviously, he was completely shunned, and yet um, he has that moment of enough is enough. I could be afraid. I continue. I could continue to just, you know, sit here by myself while these other kids do what they do, or I could stand up, and I could take a stand, and and not just stand up, but go for um, student elections, which is you know, literally being in the public eye as far as the school is concerned. And at that moment, life changes. You know, so it's, it goes back for me, uh, um, for me it's a film about, okay, how afraid are you? And are you gonna let that fear conquer you? Or are you gonna take a step forward and do something incredible that you didn't think, think that you could? Um, just over and over. Another thing, and maybe I'll, I'll let Frank take this on. For me, um, a few years ago, Frank and I were leading a youth retreat um, where the very, very last uh, conversation we were gonna have with these teenagers before they got home, is um, you know how to how to go back home after a day of retreat where you you realize you know God's love for you and and your um, job in society. How do you go back home? And something Frank brought up, and I will let you talk about it a little bit, is the fact that we forget as kids, um, we always think, oh, you know, why did God give me mom and dad, or why did I get the sister, or you know things like that. Um, when it's in reverse, our children are our gifts. To us, so as parents, sometimes we even think, okay, I got this child, so therefore I have to, you know, teach them, um, and and you know, develop them. And yet we find out very quickly in this movie, toward, you know, well, not very quickly, but obviously at the end, the big revelation is 
He's my teacher. He's my gift. So I'm just going to talk about a little bit and then we'll open it up for. Um, do you want to share anything? <laughs> 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 um, I, I think um, going back to the idea that, that if a child recognizes that they are the present, that they are the gift in the family, this boy, this son realized that. And he realized that he wasn't being raised to, to I don't mean really to look down on our society, but you know, there's a lot of kids that are stuck in this self-involved, self-centered mentality. Um, it's kind of it's kind of moved through within the culture that um, you know it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. Um, once you let go of that, if a child can let go of that self-centered mentality that's kind of surfaced around, something blossoms in them. And I think it takes something where they're exposed to that. You know, if they're not exposed, then they're never going to be able to make the connection themselves that, that they are a gift and that they have, even at the age of five, six, seven, some unique talent, uh, gift, that they can also help and attribute and, and be part of, of society and the family. Um, and I think the mu movie definitely has brought that out, and I was so inspired by, by his, his son who was saying that, you know, once, once my dad leaves, who is gonna pick this up? Yeah, am I gonna let his work go in vain? Am I gonna let, uh, let it just kind of die out? Or is my calling maybe to continue this so that more lives can continue to be saved? As a child, well, I was not thinking that. <laughs> At that age, I was thinking about, I'm gonna go play some basketball, I'm gonna hop the fence, uh, I wanna go dig some dirt, make some mud pies, I wanna play baseball. I mean, like, that, that was my mentality. That was so, last week, though, that wasn't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know what I'm saying? Like, to come to that revelation, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really, really uh, inspirational. And I think uh, this film has really inspired me in so many different ways. So I, I'd like to just actually open up to the audience to Hear what you guys have to say. Sure. I love that a hand came right up. Usually yes. it's silence and yeah. it's like this <laughs> fear for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs>
so we met for four years and had two issues. And I think personally we're the happiest four years of his life. Uh, be before that, he's, he's had a struggle with his life. And uh, our family, my mom was there three, I was there uh, for four times a week, and he was in a facility. Um, but he, he got so much love in those four years. I was actually jealous of him, that even though he had everything was taken away from him, and yet um, it, was, it was an amazing lesson for, for me that I, I no longer fear if anything was taken away from me, like I would just go blind or um, just produce uh, or pain or anything. Um, I, I think I would still be able to still have a love. And I just wish everyone could have experienced what I, what I was just taught, what our family was able to experience that. And, um, and the fact that he just existed to create that much happiness and our boy. I can just tell he's a happy, he, he believes in doing his life. And for any, anyone to say that his life isn't important, um, well, we just have to start from the point of knowing that he was, he was happy and he did the very best he could. So, congratulations for choosing that, that film. And uh, is it being shown anywhere? Is it? Yeah, actually, the, the as they submitted during the submission process, they were just picked up for distribution. So it's uh, going to be, uh, it's going to be launched uh, theatrically and it's going to be launched uh, wide release, I'm sure, on Blu-ray, DVD after that, but uh, they're in the process right now, so it, we kind of found them along that, that way, so it's, it's really, really great that it's going to happen. What's really important, too, is because of this distri distribution deal, um, they're really going to need our support, you know, even if, if five of us watched 15, 30,000, um, if, we, if we go out and continue to spread the word, when they do get picked up, um, sorry, they're, they're already picked up, when they do get to the theaters, you know, those theaters should not reflect this. It should be, you know, packed, 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 packed. The, you know, we're, we're still, we're four years old. This is a small um, festival still. We're still trying to grow. Um, but the power that you still have, even in small numbers, is huge. I always make sure people know, um, last year, our, our People's Festival winner, no, I'm sorry, our, um, our best film winner was a film that, uh, from the UK, called The Fighter's Ballad, that had about five people in the audience, but those five went, banana sandwich on social media about how great the film was. And um, and you know, of course they picked up a couple of awards from us and that's it. They went to maybe one more film festival after that in the UK. But based on the things that they heard from these audiences um, and the fact that other people were like, oh, that sounds interesting. And all of a sudden the buzz grew. They got picked up for distribution and now they're gonna be released in theaters in the US yeah. in June. So again, just don't 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 be discouraged by the small numbers because you're still so powerful. Just one of you, you know. Um, so this is this social is media. Good. Social yeah, media it really is, is yeah, it's 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 <laughs> real power in our hands. So by all means, you know, if, if tweet, tweet about it, talk tweet. about it. Any um, you wanna we have some comments here. I was, I was just going to make a quick comment to piggyback on yours. Um, not just social media, which Facebook and Twitter is great, but also um, just community organizations or anything you have with your churches. I mean, it is instrumental, um, if anyone does have a church, to go to your pastor, if your pastor speaks about it um, or, or puts it on their website or spreads it out in that way. I mean, everyone will go to the theater. So that's a huge way to grassroots. Um, I, I was going to say, I'm assuming by the by the next door wall explosions at Captain America's <laughs> point, no. the whole wall is going to be vibrating. <laughs> um, no, as, as we were saying, and, and as I said in the beginning, I had not seen the full feature until today, but I had seen so many clips of this movie online because it has gone viral, the man's story, and, and I think this is maybe a five minute video which sort of highlights this. Because of the technology that we have, because of like, for example, a GoPro camera, which if, if you watch Water for Life, that little short film just before, I'm assuming a lot of that was shot with GoPro cameras, which is, if you don't know what it is, it's a very small camera, it maybe costs a couple hundred dollars, and it shoots beautiful, and you can pack it in a little waterproof case, and you can put it in the wells like they did in that one. Um, I've seen video that they have um, inside the Dropbox they put a little GoPro inside one of those and you see the babies being dropped. And it's just an interesting video. And, and, and I'm, I'm assuming the baby's in that box no more than a minute. But they have those minutes of video of, of, of a GoPro inside of a baby being dropped off. It's, it's a really beautiful thing to watch. And it's just amazing that, uh, like I said, the, the, it, we can share this uh, online free, cheaply, and that because distribution options have changed so much, 
um, something like this can find a wide audience. And like you said last year, yeah, the amount of the audience here doesn't matter, but the fact that it's been seen so many millions of times uh, from people at home is what's really amazing to me. Um, just to close it up, I, I want to ask this one question we didn't address and that they kind of brought up in the movie, and maybe Frank can address. Um, the controversy with this saying that if baby boxes exist, will they then encourage people to be irresponsible and just, this isn't out for me when you drop the baby off, rather than really take the time to, to reflect, and if there is a life-threatening situation, then only do this. Is this a new one to comment on? Yes, I, I found that very interesting, the controversy. Controversy is, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, anything that we do is controversial. Con we shouldn't be afraid of controversy. But uh, I think that Pastor Lee said it very well and not, uh, other people said it. If they, we didn't have these uh, drop boxes, this wouldn't be an issue. It would be a superficial issue. So uh, yes, I, I see the point that it could lead to abuse or to uh, for people to say now I am um, I have this so I will yeah. just have a baby and neglect my baby and, and go drop my baby somewhere else but I think again we don't place value in human life so I don't think it's a question of how many lives are gonna be saved it's just if one life is saved I think the drop boxes are are, are a big plus Absolutely. and I think the movie does a very good yeah. good point about that and the controversy is again because what are the agencies or the government or the governments afraid of, uh, of of this becoming a social issue? It is already a social issue, and it is there is no easy solution. There's no easy answer. And I think the doctor that that was interviewed there, she said, Un unless our thinking changes, and even if we provide all the structure to be in place for things to run smoothly, that that doesn't mean that they're going to go the way that we want them to go. So it, it it's an effort. The structures need to be there but also our mentality has to shift and, and has to focus. And, and I'm glad that we're talking about technology and about using technology in a positive way because to me one of the powerful images that I saw in the film was when they were talking about this mentality that, that, that we have and, and all this uh, egocentric uh, perspective that our whole society has, not, not only young people. There was a scene in the subway where everybody was tuned in to what earphones and looking at their phones and to me that's such an expression of how into myself into my own thing into my own world I am and I just shut the, uh, the, the entire world around me off so how powerful is social media technology but when we use it to change minds to to change the mentality and, and I think that that's key Castillo is my teacher. Thank you very much for inviting me. I actually came from Pembroke Pines all the way down here oh, just to you. come. I, I didn't get to watch the whole movie. I just watched basically the end of it. But I think that was enough for me to just basically capture everything that was going on from the very beginning. And I tell you what, this invitation that you have given me today has, has been the greatest because those things that you guys showed Okay, and a lot of us, we don't look at that. Okay, I have a group of my own. Okay, I have about 40 people in my house that we do Bible study, and we decide it for our own because we know God has a purpose to go and help those people out that they're in need. We decided to see what's going on and believe that we could make a difference. And that is a difference right there. As we keep, as soon as, as soon as you guys know the date about that movie coming out, you let me know because we are going to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, really quickly, I just want to address that and, and just use that as our closing as well. This is the reason why this film festival exists. Um, these movies are absolutely stunning. Uh, not just to see, but also for for the heart, for the spirit, no matter what faith you are, I think. Um, so, and what we like and what I love so much about the panels um, is the fact that you get to not leave that thought in your mind, but 
speak it. I think when a thought is spoken out, um, it becomes the opening for an action. Um, so from here, what we would love more than anything was is would be if your film festival experience continued, not just by watching, coming back and watching more movies. Please come back and watch more movies. Um, but by taking this experience home, taking it, talking to your kids, talking to your best friend about it, talking to your neighbor. You know, I I saw this this movie and it, it moved me so much. And let this experience not stick to the screen alone. Okay, it can't live just on the screen alone. It's got to continue on inside of you. E each, each of these stories are so, so magnificent. So with that, we pray, we hope that you were inspired. Uh, that's our theme this year. Um, inspired to, to continue this journey that you started right here in this theater. And we hope to see you very, very soon. We do have the short films happening at 4.15 right here in this theater. Oh my gosh, and so important, don't forget the little ballots. If you still have yours, they will be collected on the way out. Um, don't forget, this one's up for People's Festival. So again, five, four, if you're really, really feeling it, then you can write a three in. Um, two or one, five being the greatest, one being, mm, I don't know, it kind of left me wanting more. Although I have a feeling that this one couldn't possibly. So anyway, thank you so much. We love you from the bottom of our hearts, and we can't wait to see you again. Yes. Yes, and all our filmmakers and our panelists, thank you so much. And we will see you in just a few hours, hopefully. Thank you. Take care.